welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be upgrading this Lacey D2 Quadra with this 16TB Toshiba MG series hard drive. And this is the first Toshiba hard drive I've ever purchased, and so in the video I won't just be installing it in this enclosure and setting things up, I'll also explain why I decided to choose this uh, particular hard drive model, and of course we'll be running some performance tests. So, let's go and get started. Right. Here we have our new Toshiba drive, which is one of their MG08 series enterprise models with a 16 terabyte capacity, 512 megabyte buffer, and a SATA 3 interface. The drive is also 7200 RPM, it's helium filled, and it's rated for 24 7 operation with a 550 terabyte a year workload. And this is way beyond what I require, but coupled with a five year warranty, the specification gives me a great deal of faith that this drive will serve as a reliable element of my backup infrastructure. And it's worth noting that this drive uses CMR or conventional magnetic recording rather than SMR or shingle magnetic recording that increases capacity by overlapping tracks but which results in a slower write performance. Now, the last 3.5 inch drive I purchased was a 10 terabyte Western Digital Black. In fact, this particular model, if we take a look online, and usually I do favour Western Digital drives. But the black drives have a maximum capacity, as we can see, of 10 terabytes, and I wanted a much larger drive than that. Not many options exist for high capacity internal drives in the consumer space, although I did consider a Toshiba X300. But ignoring NAS drives, to get high teens capacity, we're basically looking at enterprise class drives. And here alternatives include Seagate Exos drives, Western Digital Gold drives, and Western Digital Ultrastar models. But uh, I thought for a change I'd go for uh, Toshiba, specifically the uh, MG08 series, which are slightly older models available in 14 or 16 terabyte capacities with the 09 series offering 16 and 18 terabyte capacities, and the 10 series being available, hardly surprisingly, in 18 or 20 terabytes. Although right now, at least here in the UK, the price capacity sweet spot for an internal hard drive seems to land at 16 terabyte. This said, it is cool to see that Western Digital Ultrastar drives over here are available with up to a 26 terabyte capacity, and the Seagate Exos Mosaic 3 Plus in up to 32 terabytes, although in both cases these massive drives are SMR. Anyway, back with a drive half that size, just 16 terabytes in capacity, I bought this from Scan Computing for £264.98, which is about $337. And as we can see, unlike a consumer product, enterprise hard drives come in very minimal individual packaging. And this means it's very important to purchase from a retailer who will look after the drive in shipping. And uh, fortunately for me, this particular drive arrived in a box cocooned in bubble wrap, and inside that, the drive was in a foam padded hard drive carrier. So let's release it from its plastic. Very simple, we just lift up and uh, there we are. That must be the simplest unboxing in the history of unboxings, hasn't it? Very, very easy. Take it out. Oh dear, floor caught the packaging. And this is a, a heavy drive, as a, we might expect it to be. And uh, before I use it to upgrade my D2 Quadra, the uh, enclosure I showed you earlier in the video, I thought we would set the drive up and run some performance tests. Right, I've now temporarily connected up our new Toshiba drive to a spare SATA port and SATA power cable on my test rig, and it's running away, it seems to be nice and quiet. And if we go across to the Windows 11 desktop currently running on the test rig, here we are. If we just bring up this PC, we can see that the drive doesn't appear. This is what we would expect. It's a new internal drive which needs initializing and formatting. So let's go to this PC and right click and select Manage like that, and if we go to uh, Disk Management, which is hiding down there, there we are, there's a uh, Disk Management, and it should pick the drive up 
it has. It tells us we've got to initialize the disk and we need to choose a partition table style as it says here. We can either use a MBR, master boot record, or a GPT, which is more modern. And indeed here we've got to use GPT because MBR only supports drives up to two terabytes in size. And so to use all the capacity on our new drive, we've got to use GPT as it is recommending. So uh, we'll click OK on that. There we go. There it is. We have a massive amount of uh, unallocated space. So let's just uh, click on that and right click. And we're going to do a new simple volume. There we are. And we'll do a next. And I'm going to keep everything in one partition. So we'll just click next again and uh, indeed next again after that where we now get to format the partition and we'll use the ntfs file system i'll use the default allocation size we'll give it a name i think we'll call it uh, toshiba that seems reasonable and we now have the option of either doing a quick format which is a default here or we can do a full format and in fact, I'm going to do a full format. I'm going to get rid of the uh, quick format option there because a full format, whilst it will take a lot longer, will also scan for bat sectors, which is a good thing to do with a new drive. And so I'll now click on next like uh, that. Are we happy with what we're doing? I think we are. So we'll click on finish. And this will now take a very long time. And so I'm going to leave this running and I'll come back to you tomorrow after this intertitle. Greetings! Here I am back again and an entire day later. And I did keep an eye on the format, which started at 8.11 pm last night and reached 26% formatted by 12.31 am, 77% by 11.45 am today, and then I managed to catch it at 99% complete at 5.59 pm when I launched Open Hardware Monitor to check on my drive's temperature which, as we can see, was a nice and cool 33 degrees Celsius. And skipping forward a little in time, the full format then finally finished at 6.01pm, having taken 21 hours 50 minutes. And whilst this is clearly a long time, I still think it's wise to run a full format on a new hard drive to identify and flag any bad sectors. And indeed, Microsoft advise that the quick format option should only be used on previously formatted volumes that you know are in good condition. And it's also good to know that the new driver survived a nearly 22-hour full mechanical soak test, and it did so without getting too hot and whilst remaining very quiet indeed. So, back in real time, let's run a few performance tests, and we'll start with a Crystal Disk Mark, which I've got running down here, there we are, all set up, so let's run the tests. There we go, and these are very pleasing results for a mechanical storage device. This said, these are theoretical results, they're test results, I want to do some uh, real results as well. So over here I've got a couple of Explaining Computers videos sitting on an SSD. Let's just see how big they are, I think they're about 25 gigabyte. They are about 25 gigabytes, so let's just take a, a copy of those files and we'll go across to our new drive. There it is, all empty, that won't last. So let's now paste these files across and see what performance we get. And initially here we have very good performance, but it can't last, it must be filling up the cache. Eventually things will drop. Yes, it now drops this much be the uh, real performance, which is uh, gonna bound around a bit, I think, but a good, uh, 160-ish sort of megabytes a second. That's not bad. Let's uh, speed through through the rest of the copy. And there we are. It's finished. And by the magic of filmmaking, we will keep the completed copy graph on the screen. And as you can see, we copied 25.5 gigabytes of actual Explaining Computers backup files in 2 minutes 10 seconds which gives us a data transfer speed of almost exactly 200 megabytes a second. And I think this is a very acceptable result. The Toshiba drive is clearly providing good data transfer speeds, as well as running quietly and not generating too much heat. And so I think it's now time to install it in its new home. So, this is the trusty D2 Quadra in which I'm going to fit our new drive. 
and over the years I've built up quite a few Lacey D2s as you can see. Although these are earlier models here are now more of a historical curiosity because they take IDE drives and so cannot be upgraded to a large capacity. And indeed it's worth noting that even some older SATA enclosures cannot access a drive greater than 2 terabytes, or technically 2.2 terabytes. So if you want to do what I'm doing here and upgrade an old external hard drive, you do need to be aware of this. Although all enclosures manufactured in the last 10 years or so should be upgradable to a high capacity SATA drive. I like these D2 enclosures because they offer a good suite of interfaces, including USB 3 and eSATA. And if you're wondering, I use the drive we're upgrading as secure on-site storage as part of a 441 backup strategy for my large-scale data. And this means I keep four copies of all my video and other large files on four separate media with at least one copy always held off-site. So, I'm running an enhanced version of standard 321 backup. And if you want more information, check out my cybersecurity backups and encryption video. Anyway, let's get on with our upgrade, which first requires the stand to be removed from the base of a drive. So uh, let's do that using uh, Allen the key. There we are, this just now slides off like that. And we needed to do that because in a second's time, we're going to need to access these two screws. And uh, talking of screws, we've got some screws to remove from the base of the drive. So uh, let's do that. You can probably see from these little labels here, I've not been into this drive before. I'm assuming under here is a standard cross point. It is like I've uh, seen previously. And um, whilst I take these out, it's worth noting I could have set the drive up. I could have initialized it and formatted it after I'd put the disc into this case. But uh, as you'll see, this is quite an involved case to get into. And so I wanted to test the drive out, make sure it's all working before I, I got on with this. There we are. And this now drops off and there's a shield inside which I've found in the past it's best to take out. They're very good quality enclosures of D2s, that's why I keep reusing them. So that's the uh, one end and the other end now, as you probably would guess, this piece will just come off and we now have a drive inside a, a sort of a, a tube thing really, don't we? And to get it out we have to go back to the top and release the screws here with a, a different screwdriver. If I've got the right one Hopefully, is that the right one? I think it is. Oh, these are tight. There we are. And now, if we are lucky, which way should it slide? It should slide that way, I think. And I've learned in the past, it looks like these will fit lots of different ways into this thing, but they don't. They only fit one way, and you've got to be very careful to make sure you leave things in the right position or you won't get it back in again. So uh, anyway, there we are. Currently a Seagate 5 uh, 100 gigabyte for uh, 5 terabyte drive, which we're going to switch with our new drive, which I've got uh, over here. Here it is, waiting to go in with its noisy packaging. Go over there. Noisy packaging's been thrown away. So uh, I now need to uh, remove the drive. There must be screws underneath, it's like the ones I've used before. So I'll have to take out all the screws. There we are. This is quite a spectacular disassembly. And in theory, this drive will now come out. It's clearly got this across it, but that's going to have to come off as well. Can I get that pulled back? I can. And the drive should now come out like that. There we are. We are successful. And so in theory, we can take our new drive and we can drop it in in the same manner. We can, that's pretty good. And if we flick it over, we can put the screws back in. There we go. And as you can probably see, the heat sinking here is excellent. Massive piece of metal connected directly onto the drive and of course that contacts onto the case. So if we just pull it back like that, and uh, I said there's only one way they went in. I think it was that way. No, it's the other end, wasn't it? Was it, was it, was it that end? Let me have a guess. That was not the way. There we are. And uh, 
there we are, it has gone back in. So we now just need to find the uh, end with those screws and put those back. There we go, everything is now secure. I do like these cases, lovely cases these. Have I said that already? I think I probably have. Anyway, this now goes uh, on uh, this end like that. And then we need to refit the screen, which goes back in that way round, I think. There we are, that's nicely still in contact, which is still operational. This goes back on the top like that, and we return to our very long screws. And there we are, it's back in one very, very solid piece. So we now just need to uh, replace the stand. And there we are, I've now got an upgraded Lacey D2 Quadra. We've gone from this uh, five terabyte drive to a 16 terabyte drive. And so all that now remains to be done is to replace the label and to copy across the data from the old drive to the new one, which of course will take quite a few hours, if not as long as fully formatting the entire capacity of our new 16 terabyte hard drive. So there we are, I've replaced a 5 terabyte backup drive with a 16 terabyte backup drive. Although I'm now, as is often the case when I purchase more storage, I'm now going, hmm, that was a bit rash, you bought a massive drive, that cost a lot of money, should I have done that? Although I do know that in the medium and long term I have never ever regretted purchasing any form of storage. And it is now very reassuring to know that at least part of my backup infrastructure now has enough capacity to store many more years of Explaining Computers episodes. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.